we're getting near the end. So this will be, oh gosh, I think the fourth reading and the fifth reading and maybe the sixth reading of Cheryl Murphy, who was the stand-in for Thomas John late September, 2023. It is a gallery reading. <clears throat> I've done several other videos on this. I have a playlist for Cheryl Murphy. If you want to see them all, try to watch them in order because I think it's really important to see, to really understand a medium is not to get one reading, but to have many readings and really look at them in depth. I have, this video is going to be longer than normal. So if you need to stop and start, that's fine. I have not watched these videos in a month or more because I'm recording this October 18th, 2023. And when I did see them, when I saw them live on the Zoom with um, my team members, I really didn't pay that much attention because I was looking for a hot reader, which was Thomas John. And then when it switched over to this cold reader, it was, um, I don't know, we were on hour two and I just wasn't paying as much attention as I probably should be. So I've taken this video, I've cropped it to each individual reading. I have blurred the person who's getting read as well as their name. Now, I want to make this clear because I don't know if I've made this super uber duper clear. This was a gallery reading done by Thomas John in 2023 late September and everybody who attended and there was a hundred and I think 14 people we counted at the max four male the rest female and as we're watching this you know I'm there they never noticed I was there I, you know I'm not using the name Susan Gerbic but you should be able to pick up on my energy you know so we're there watching and because we paid I had a ticket I paid for this when the video is, when the event's over, every single person receives the Zoom video of everything. So there's at least 114 links out there for all the people who went to this event and nothing's, nothing is blurred. So people's names are what they are there. Other people's readings are there. Uh, all their pictures, everything is there. So I personally am more comfortable with blurring the image of the person and removing their last names whenever I'm showing their, their reading. <clears throat> but that is not done on Thomas John or Cheryl Murphy's. This is just Susan Gerbic on Psychics Explained. I do still have the video with their face and, and their name and everything. So that's all private, unlisted. For my team for research but not these videos so i just want to be clear that these videos are are multiple people have them over 100 people have this video and that i am the one who's blurring them off just for privacy readings other things i should wouldn't make sure that you guys understand um when when the video you're watching right now with me that we're about to watch is a person who is like large one person on the screen and whenever that person stops talking and somebody else starts talking then their video appears and is large on the screen to the medium who is there and doing the reading they can see the person they're reading for a hundred percent of the time so in cold reading as a lot of you already are aware cold reading relies on making statements bold statements that uh, oftentimes that are common to most people but they do it in such a way so that everybody seems to think that they're getting a personalized reading they also make statements that are um, generic tropes of the psychic world but they also rely on your body language the 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 room around you you guys can make a lot of assumptions about the person i am by based on my videos by my voice my accent or lack thereof <laughs> i don't think i have an accent but everybody tells me i do the room around me the clothing i'm wearing and also my body language so if i immediately start tearing up at the name of somebody 
or if I am kind of looking confused or like, I don't know where she's going with this, then the the medium who's done thousands of readings, well, I don't know if this Cheryl person has done thousands of readings, but if if you were to have done a lot of readings, you pick up on that. Whether you're doing that intentionally or not, we we just as humans, most of us are okay with picking up on cues for the person we're talking to. If we're going on the right path or if we need to change course, if they're bored with what we're saying or if they're very interested in what we're saying and on and on. You guys get this, right? So I want to make sure that that's a, that you understand that what we see, you and I are going to see on this video is the video that they've sent us, which is a, where somebody's speaking, they come up on the screen. Somebody's not speaking, they're hidden from us, but the medium can see people the entire time. So we don't know if when the person isn't speaking, if they're making body language, like, uh -uh. You know, we don't know. And that's why the medium course cracks. Okay, so as we go through this, now I'm going to do, this is different because I'm going to show more than one reading at a time. Um, normally I chop this into one reading at a time. This is at least two. I don't think it's three. I think it's just two women. <clears throat> um, what you're seeing is Cheryl is going to say, I'm getting a certain name. Who does that relate to kind of thing and then one two three women from this 114 people who are attending say that applies to me so that says a lot of how general a statement can be taken multiple people can in it it can hit them and so this person it might be their brother this person it might be their best friend and that person over there might be their dad like I said, I haven't watched this, but I just know that there are multiple women. She goes to at the beginning, I've blurred them and their names, and then she goes from one person to another person. So just how general these things can possibly be out of a room of 114 people. So I'm going to show them both because I want to see, I want you guys to see how, how, um, if we see a lot of commonalities, I, like I said, I've been breaking this up into little videos for, of Cheryl Murphy, but l let's look at them together back to back and see what happens. I don't know. These are supposed to be psychic readings. This is supposed to be a psychic event, but it keeps going into mediumship over and over. All right. Here's the questions to listen for. Are these readings helpful to the sitter? Is it helpful? Was it, you know, was it helpful? Um, and what is missing? Because that's my thing. What is missing? And is this some kind of entertainment, which is what the media seems to think Hollywood thinks or people who are saying, oh, it's just a Halloween thing. It's entertainment. Like this is some sort of game, um, pretending to talk to people's dead family members or giving them life advice is some sort of game. So there are a few, not very many, but there are a few of the mediums that I look at on their website. It says for entertainment purposes only, as if it's some sort of get out of jail free card. Don't bother me. I'm not giving you health advice, financial advice, or anything of the sort. Don't sue me. Most psychics that I review don't have that on their websites. I just reviewed Cheryl Murphy's before I started this series on her and there is no disclaimer of any kind on there. And let me tell you, mediums out there who put that disclaimer on your website, it's not going to protect you because when we get into these private readings, which is where I am right now and you are too, we're watching private readings. It's a different world out there. The stuff that you release on Facebook, I mean on Facebook, on YouTube or on your website where it's been edited down to the, just the good chunks and you're carefully curating it. Those are not what I'm really interested in. I'm interested in these one-on-one -on -one behind the, the screen, behind the scenes kind of videos that's raw. There is nothing going on in here that is edited. We can see, I mean, other than, like I said, sometimes people are not on screen. That's interesting. 
And that is where we're seeing that there is no entertainment value whatsoever in this. So I want you to listen, listen for those three questions, take notes. I'm going to be taking notes and let's talk about it. I'll probably stop. We'll see. I mean, it's um, 19 minutes, which will take me 500 hours to get through. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get started and um, we'll come back and check on this as we go. This should be very fascinating. Is there a Maryland on the call or a, um, does someone have a Maryland in spirit? I'll just say that even though I do feel I, I, I'm answering a psychic question, I just heard Maryland or go to Maryland or maybe you're from Maryland. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see where we are. I see two people I am. and Tanya. Hello. Who am I with? Tanya. Hi, I'm from Maryland. Hi. Hi. And then Martha said yes to uh, Martha. Do you have a Maryland? I have a Maryland in spirit, my sister-in-law. Okay. okay, let's just see. And then, so I have Martha. And then who is the other one that says they live in Maryland? Uh, Brooke also. Hi. Is this Brooke Anthony? Hi. Yes, ma'am. Hi. I, I don't see your faces yet because I'm, I'm looking on the screen. But let's just see. I feel like I'm going to go to Martha first, only because I'm hearing go to Martha first. And she was the first one that said yes. It's like that's just kind of and, and then she knows someone in spirit with that name. So, Martha, what is your psychic question for tonight, please? Concerns about my health or do I need to be concerned? Hi, Martha. And um, let's just see where you are on the screen. Um, I don't know if you can raise your hand in the reactions button. Uh, do you know how to do that? Um, and that brings you right to the front of the screen. I'm just looking for you. There, you, well, there's Primo. Where's Martha? I'm just looking. My video is on. There you are, Martha. Hi, you got your thumbs up. I see you. You were on the video earlier tonight for some reason. I don't know. Uh, oh. But you didn't get the reading, but I saw your face come up. So maybe Spirit wanted to bring you through. Um, yeah. Yeah, just to tell you, your sister is fine, and you and her, you and she are very, very close. Is that right? We're very close. She's yes. an arm wrestler, like she's grabbing my arm. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. She's coming through. Strong woman. She is a strong woman, and she has a strong partner in you, and she has a lot of grace around her, she says. Thank you for all the grace. Um, and so your question is around your health, Martha? Yes, it is. And is it, uh, I'm not sure what it is yet, but I just heard, is it walking, please? Or is it also the breathing? I'm not sure yet. I'm just feeling. Breathing. Uh, it it began musculoskeletal. Yeah. 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 I felt like a chronic fatigue is what I, what I started feeling also. Musculoskeletal. Yeah. No, I'm not, no, I'm pretty energetic, but uh, I was. I was 911 to the hospital Sunday with a potential heart attack, but it was not that. Gracious. But while I was there, some other things have come up, which are concerning. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm hearing you need new doctors. So maybe you're already in the middle of that, Martha. Would you understand that, please? Okay, that might be, yes. So this be. is what I hear for you. I'll just tell you what I'm getting, and then we'll hope, hopefully this will help you. Um, I'm feeling um, new doctors, like new blood work. I almost feel a whole nother health center for you or a whole nother building, like a whole nother treatment center for you okay and that the doctors will listen to you there like there they're going to listen to you but i also still feel a problem walking please or a problem with balance uh, just, uh well you know, i had a major muscle spasm so that did cause some problems but sorry yeah 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 and i want to say and then you did you have a heart attack did you say no you did? they oh, thought you i did they they it was a major did. Muscle spasm, thank God. Because <laughs> what I'm hearing is, uh, I'm hearing as well, you know, that's connected to the breathing, you know. Well, so, yeah. uh, you know, maybe that's it. And um, also, do you have strong allergies, please, Martha? No, not that I know of yet, anyway. Okay. And that your dad is crossed over? Yes. Okay. You know, you're a lot like your sister is what I'm saying. It's almost, that's what I'm giving. It's almost like, well, look at your sister's health or something like that. Like, what did she have? That's what they're telling me to kind of go that direction or that's okay. your sister. Okay. Um, first off, number one, calm down, calm down is what I'm hearing, right? So do you live by yourself, please? 
Yes, I do. Because it's, you know, when we live by ourselves, we get all worked up, you know, yeah. like, you know, hey, it's at nighttime. I don't have anyone to talk to or how right. am I going to calm down, calm down, whether you drink tea to calm down or breathe or, but you're fine. It's, it's really, it is difficult. It's that anxiety or just trying to get through the night or that, but things will get better. And I want to say, um, I think your sister is having a divine intervention here, meaning she's wanting to line you up with a better hospital system is what she says, you know, I don't know, just like a better regimen. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, yeah, my doctor just changed to a new hospital oh. system and I'm not satisfied with that one, but someone told me you really should try a hematologist. And Perfect. Yeah, definitely about the blood work. And I want to tell you, there's something about your eating. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. What was she going to say? I don't know. I put myself on a diet and they <laughs> said they wonder if it's connected with a dietary deficiency. Yeah. I mean, it could be all of that, but I, I do feel the answers are in the blood and I do feel doctors that will listen to you, you know, and that treat the whole person like, you know, not just one, but and you will find them. And I think your sister, I mean, she's like right here, like my ear, I can feel her just saying, I'm going to, you know, help you. It's going to happen. Okay. All right, Martha. Thank did you. I just, did we just miss a birthday or did a birthday just pass, please? No, it's coming up. <laughs> okay. Is it her, your birthday or her birthday? Her, or? Birthday. her birthday was in November. Yes. Hers is in November. Very good. Uh, well, I know. Mm -hmm. So I do feel your life, just to tell you, there's so much more longevity here. You're right. So Good. know that she's know that, look, your spirit team is dynamite. Like they are on it. They're on top of things. Your sister, she's a stick of dynamite, right? She's a firecracker, as they say, right? Yes, she yes, is yes. on it. She's on it. And mm -hmm. she's, she's very much uh, funny too. Your sister's very yes, funny. She has a great sense like, of humor. She she would, was tell me jokes. She's a good person to know you know uh anyway yeah and, and i'm sure your dad is as, as well uh yeah. so lots of love to you martha thank you really you're 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 being a good advocate for yourself i do want to say you're a good hospital to me yeah good okay. you are you're a good advocate okay all right thank, thank you me. very much thank you oh my goodness guys what the heck I'm telling you, when you get into these private readings where they're behind, where you have to pay to get in, and these videos are not uploaded to their channel as their best of the best, you really see a lot of stuff that's going on that is not okay. I took a bunch of notes. Oh my gosh, did you guys take some notes too? So let me know in the let me know in the comments because. I just, oh my gosh, you guys. My first line I wrote on here, Marilyn, who's Marilyn or from Maryland, Marilyn or Marilyn, M-A-R-I-L-Y-N versus M-A-R-Y-L-A-N-D. Can you not tell the difference? You're communicating with the dead and you're giving medical advice and you've been giving financial advice. And you can't tell the difference between the state of Maryland or a human being named Marilyn. And I bet if somebody said they had a cat or a dog named Marilyn, she would have been all over it. You can't tell if they're living or dead. I mean, seriously, people, this is horrible. They trust her. They trust her reading to be a... a <clears throat> let's continue she hears somebody in her brain telling her go to martha first somebody is telling her she hears it now that is a load of bs and you all know it she's hearing like voices you're hearing voices? It's called schizophrenia. They just happened to, this woman's happened to learn how to make some money off of it. Her schizophrenia. I don't think she's hearing anything. Give me a break. My goodness. 
<laughs> this is what happens when I've watched too many of these videos. I just get punch punchy. Okay. Um, okay. She picks up on Mary, Martha, because it, it, the voice in her head said, go to Martha first. Let's go there. Okay. You were on the reading earlier, but you didn't get a reading. You were on the, like her face popped up. And I guess that's the spirit wanted you to get a reading. Okay. Well, this is a one of those readings where if you're not muted and you make a noise, I mean, somebody coughs or an ice cream truck goes by or whatever, and, and the Zoom screens hear sound, then you pop on the screen for a second until somebody else starts talking. Okay. So she popped on earlier. It's, that's just a zoom thing that has nothing to do with spirit calling you forward i mean the implications of of spirit whatever that is has sent um your picture onto the screen for a brief second um well this means that she was watching earlier she watched thomas john's hour before this so she got a feel for who was on the call and, and was able to read the chat and, all, and on and on for the first hour <clears throat> okay so her psychic question this woman martha dear martha she's in her late 70s i blurred her her late 70s what are the odds that her parents are alive in their 90s Maybe it's possible, but the odds are not great. She said her sister had died. Her sister's name is Marilyn. Marilyn's question. I mean, why bother going to a doctor? I mean, why bother going to a doctor when you could just get a reading for 20, I think it was $21 to get into this, something like that with all the fees that are on $25, something like it, $26. Why bother with a medical profession when you have mediums who are going to give you all this information? My question is, should I be concerned about my health? I want to know about my health. Should I be concerned about my health? I'm more concerned about you going to a, a psychic medium for your medical advice. I think you should be very concerned about that, Martha. Martha, you should not be going to a psychic medium to get health advice, to know any kind of advice, anything, nothing. You Maybe she knows the right day of the week, but what day today is or maybe she can give you some advice on what the weather is if you should wear a sweater or not but that's that's kind of it should i be concerned again with the with the breathing thing i got it right this time walking or breathing and martha says i'm quite active so it ain't walking breathing well, as as uh, James Baker was, uh, James was telling us from the Psychic Skeptic, Skeptic Psychic, Psychic Skeptic channel, he was telling us that breathing could be a lot of things and not just lungs. It could be a lot of different things. So this giant world here. Um, so Martha tells us she had to call 911 to go to emergency. And in this brilliant advice that cheryl is giving martha you need to go see new doctors you need new doctors okay so that can mean multiple things it could be um somebody has a good health normally has never seen a cardiologist and now they've been diagnosed with something happening in the heart and so now they have to go see a, um, a cardiologist so that is a new doctor and they're probably going to be in a different place you know different building new nurses, new receptionists, new parking lot, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, you're seeing new doctors whenever you have an ailment that you didn't realize you had. If you become, um, a, if you have cancer, you probably never would have gone to see an oncologist ever until you have cancer. And then you start seeing an oncologist. And once you see the oncologist, it's usually a different room, a different building, different you see what I'm saying? So those are new doctors. So that's what I think Martha is saying. I mean, Martha, Cheryl is saying is that when you went to the doctor and had this 911 emergency, they probably found something and said, you should probably go see a specialist in this area, whatever it is, thyroid, um, 
uh, um, balance, um, you know, something, some other reason that she would go to. But I'm also hearing, and I think Martha's hearing, possibly new doctors or a new doctor. So this could be extremely dangerous. You have a long time relationship with your doctor, but the doc now the psychic's telling you to see a new doctor. Again, don't get your medical advice from a psychic medium who has no, no, nothing. There's no reason. You wouldn't even talk to your best friend this way, right? Hey, go see a new doctor. I don't think each doctor is very good. Go find a new doctor. New blood work. Well, that's kind of typical. You get new blood work. You get it done every so often and they look at your blood and they, you know, that's common. She's seeing new blood work. So, so far, Cheryl's just playing the odds, right? A new health center, which is, as I said, if you go to a different um, kind of doctor, you will probably go to a different building. You know, that's just the way it is. And then um, walking and balance, balance again. She says, I see there's a problem with balance. Well, again, she's about 75. And she says she's active. And then she says, do you have strong allergies? And Martha says, no, I don't. But what she adds is, not that I know of, or at least not yet, one of those two. In other words, Martha is trying to make it fit. She's trying to help out the psychic and not make the psychic wrong. She's trying to say, well, not yet, maybe, or not that I know of. And this is what medium, um, this is what sitters do. They're motivated to keep the reading going because they know if they start giving a whole bunch of no's, no, that's not right. No, that doesn't make any sense. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Then Cheryl's going to go, I don't think I'm with you. I'm going to go to the other Marilyn now. You see? So they try to make it fit. They're motivated to keep the sitting going. They're doing a lot of the work. The sitter is just as important than the psychic. They feed off of each other and they have to keep it moving. Hmm. All right. So is your dad passed over? Well, what do you think? What do you think? Why do you have to ask? Why don't you just tell us his name? So your dad, Joseph, um, Frederick Fritzelmeyer was your dad. And he was raised in um, Cleveland, Ohio. And he, no, 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 no. Your dad. That's it. That's all she's got. Okay. Well, the woman's 75-ish. I can see her. Well, before I blurred her, um, she was seen. You could see her. So, <laughs> um, and so she's telling her to calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. That's what she's hearing. Well, okay, maybe that is good advice. And then again, maybe it's not good advice. Maybe you should get yourself into a doctor and, and take it seriously. When the doctor says, I have an appointment for you next week, maybe you should go to that appointment next week and not put it off for a few months because you're, you know, you, you have other things you're doing right now. Maybe you should take it seriously and go get it taken care of now, not, you know, calm down. We don't know what happens to Martha after she hangs up her, her, her reading today. She may have a massive heart attack after this, this is event is over. And we don't know because there's no follow-up. Calm down, she says the person who has no uh, expertise and um, doesn't know any better. You live by yourself? Another question. She's 75-ish. Very likely she lives by herself. Or, you know, maybe she can tell from the room that it doesn't look like it's very occupied by somebody. And then she's been on all, you know, at least an hour that Cheryl's been sitting there watching Thomas John do his videos. So maybe, maybe she could just tell, or then again, maybe it's just a statement somebody makes. It is just so generic that it's, do you live by yourself? She asked a question. Don't you know? You are fine. Calm down. Your sister is divine intervention. Only your sister, nobody else. How about dad, mom, your brother, the other family members, your husband? They're not mentioned. Why are they not mentioned? Because she doesn't know if there is a husband or if there is a brother. 
She's just sticking with what she knows, her sister. And she knows she had parents at one point. So, you know, doctor has changed to a new hospital. So again, Martha's making it fit. She doesn't want the psychic to be wrong. So she tries in her brain to figure out a way of making it correct. And she says, my doctor is now in a new building. I don't know if I like it very much. And my friend was telling me that I should go see um, something else. I think it was a blood doctor is what she mentioned. I don't, I don't even know what all that's about, but neither does um, Cheryl. She put herself on a diet. The woman looks real thin from what I can see on this video. So I'm not sure why she put herself on a diet. Is she, is she thinks she's got allergies to wheat? No, no. She says she has no allergies. So she's put herself on a diet. Okay. Maybe she should see a nutritionist. Maybe she should see a doctor to advise her before she goes on to advise uh, on a diet. You know, do you, she's, she's healthy. She thought she's active. Do you think you should be messing around with that? Well, she's put herself on a diet. I don't know. I don't think that's great. And she says that the people at the emergency said that maybe she's having a problem. The diet that she's put herself on is, is the problem why she's having this, I think she said muscle spasms or something like that, because she has a deficiency, like she's not eating something. And so now she has a deficiency because she's not getting enough of, I don't know, vitamin C or vitamin D or something she's cut out of her diet for reasons that are unknown. Cheryl doesn't know, and Cheryl has no business telling her, but if you're going to go on a diet, you probably should talk to somebody as far as I know. It's, it's, trust me, I know it's not good. <laughs> um, hey, a birthday just passed, right? She asked us a question. There was a birthday that just passed. There's only 12 months in a year and a birthday. Why doesn't Martha just say whose birthday? <laughs> I don't get this thing. A birthday just passed. Cheryl said this in an earlier video too, that there was a birthday coming up. It's such a, it's such a trope with psychics. They do this. I have a couple others on my uh, videos up on my channel where they do that nonsense with a birthday crap. A birthday has passed. Oh no, it's coming up. And she says, who's yours? Or is it your sister's? And she goes, yeah, it's my sister's coming up in November. This was recorded at the end of September, people. All right. So that's at least two months, September, end of September to October, a, a month and a half. So if, if your idea of a birthday coming up is a month and a half, at least from now, maybe two months, then that's a pretty big spectrum of birthday coming up. So if there's only 12 months in a year and you're going to give her a pass on two of them, the odds that a birthday are coming up are pretty darn good. All right. Um, longevity, long, long, longativity, like you're going to live a lot longer. So how does she know this? Is it just a feeling Cheryl gets? Is that, is that ethical? You're giving her good news, you say. But what does life actually mean? Why doesn't she tell her? Oh, yes, you're going to get Alzheimer's and you're going to be, you know, or you're going to be in a coma, but you're going to be alive in a bed, you know, as a vegetable somewhere. I mean, <laughs> why would somebody tell somebody this? You think it seems like it's a good thing, but it's actually so vague. What does that mean? And why is it that it's okay to tell somebody that? Would she have told her if she's got maybe a year? If she's got six months, would she have told her? And how would she know? She has no business telling her this. It's so unethical, you guys. Team spirit is on it. That's what I wrote. Your sister is telling me funny jokes. Really, Cheryl? Because I'm watching you. And I don't see where she has time to be telling you knock-knock jokes or whatever while you're speaking. 
So when is she telling you funny jokes? Is she telling you like, you know, um, you know what? Chicken butt or something like that. That's really fast and short to say, or is she telling you a long, long elaborate jokes? I mean, what is she saying? She says, she's telling me jokes. Well, why don't you say, Hey, wait, wait, wait. Your sister used to tell this joke all the time. Let me tell you it. No, she doesn't do that. What? <laughs> so glad I'm, I'm, I'm really not, I, I tell myself I'm not talking to myself here. Somebody is watching this. I know there are people watching this. All right. Are you able to go to the next one with me? We're almost halfway done. Well, that was seven minutes long. And we've got 12 minutes more to go. I hope it's just two more readings so we can stop in the middle of it. <laughs> I got to turn my fan on here. I'm just getting myself worked up. Okay, here we go. Brooke, and then I'm going to go to someone else after that who's already coming through. But Brooke, did, were yes, you? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Uh, yes, hi, we were going to, because you are in Maryland. Yes, ma'am, I am. Hi there. What is your question, please? So I am working to trying hard to start a foundation. Um, it's not easy to do. So if you have any guidance or what can you see as far as um, suggestions with the foundation, um, where do you see this going forward? helping other people um it's we'll be working with johns hopkins um, yeah you have a, i feel like it's working with children and that you have a relative that passed from something that you are is that right the foundation yeah. my grandson um cash was two years old and he passed away five weeks ago in the pediatric cardiac icu mm -hmm. I'm sorry, somebody else said something. Brooke, um, our hearts go out to you and um, you know, how you're keeping it together, we don't know. You know, I, I, I'm I, sorry, I don't, I, but I do tell you, I, well, you know, first off, uh, what Spirit said when you're asking me the question is, um, you're doing this all on your own. You're doing this all on your own. It's like, holy cow. I mean, right there, you're doing all of this on your own. And you need lots and lots of people, not just two or three. I mean, you need like a whole um, rotary club or something helping you out. Like you need a club of people helping you out. And that might be a good place to start in your community is with rotary or some community foundation to help you get started. Because what I keep hearing is start small, you know, start in your community, but have a lot of, a lot of people's hands in it to help you. And that this will grow. This is, as as um, Graham mentioned, nationwide taking his business. You will, this will be like a whole new, like we'll hear about it, just like the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Like this will be a name named foundation, right? Um, and I feel like you do or you will have the backing or the financial backing you need. And really it is about getting the notoriety or, you know, of just one celebrity or athlete or whoever that person is, maybe just anonymous even, we don't have to know who that person is, but that you are the one to do this. And um, so this is your grandson, Nash. Grand, cash, uh, your grandson, cash, like, uh, cash, but it's with a K. You. Your grandson, Cash, who says, never look back. All right. It's almost like never look back. All right. And, um, you know, his passing took people by surprise, but in somehow he says he knew it. Does that make sense to you, Brooke? And if it doesn't, you can say, no, I'm good with that. Yeah, he, he didn't have a great life expectancy but he may 15th he had open heart surgery number three yeah he had a two strokes june 18th he had open heart surgery number four june 19th but then he was on ecmo a long time but then he started getting better and even the doctor said i think he's gonna make it and then all of a sudden he coded um you know he says he broke records you know? He did. They didn't. Ex they they were like, I, I can't believe it. Like he's gonna make it. 
you know. he goes, he goes, Cheryl, I am an athlete. I broke records, you know, <laughs> like he's, he's a showman or he's, he's, uh, he's really quite the old soul, as they say, right? Quite the old soul as in, I did, I did accomplish a lot in such a, a minimal amount of time, you know? And um, so very much with the angels. I just feel like angels are a big deal. He would have believed in angels or you guys would have discussed angels. And I don't know what your foundation's title is, but maybe it's going to have an angel somewhere in the name or a, 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 I don't know. Is a, I don't know. There's something about having an angel logo or I, I don't know what this is, but this is part of it. And I also get the color of blue, Brooke. Yeah. So I don't know. You understand that? Would that be his yeah. favorite color? Um, he, he was mostly nonverbal, um, but we are calling it the, I'm calling it because nobody is helping me. Yeah. Um, the Courageous Cash Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's really more blue and shifting more of the hearts and stuff to red. Um, I, I, I started it about six days ago and I have 300 people on my page already. Um, I feel like I have a heart with angel wings on either side, like that to be a yeah. logo or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm working on a logo now. Yeah. So. so, so look, I just want to say, uh, um, I, I want to say that your your foundation is credible, is what I'm hearing. So it's credible, meaning, um, you know, there's value to it, and I, I do want to tell you. I know you feel lost. I mean, there's just so much happening in your world right now with him just recently leaving this planet. But I, I do feel there's a mission here, right? Do you feel it's a mission, Brooke? Yeah, I just, I want, I want him to be proud of me. Mm -hmm. And I want to help other people. And yeah. I want other people to find value in being helped yeah. through this tragedy. Uh -huh. Uh, so I do see just a lot of people helping you. Uh, I do feel financial backing working for you. And I do know that, of course, your health has to be paramount now, you know, about caring for yourself and allowing yourself to, uh, you know, be in whatever way you want to be. But there's, I know that you will receive healing when you help others. That's really what he's telling me is, is the healing happens knowing that you can help others with his story. And look, um, I don't know why this is, why I'm hearing this, but I feel like, and I'm going to say that there's a book, but I feel like, I don't know if you're writing it. I feel like it's a book with different chapters from different stories from different people. And this book is sold and a hundred percent of the money goes towards the foundation, something like that. So, and look, you don't have to go out there and do anything. What I'm hearing is the people will come to you. You know, it's like, the people will come, right? They say like the, the, the people who want to help you raise the money, the people who surrendered that this is their mission too. That's yeah. what I'm hearing for you. So um, in some way, I believe your grandson is saying, look, what's important is that you can, you need to sleep at night because there's something about you not sleeping. And that's really, we have to kind of just say, look, we need you to sleep at night because he's going to communicate with you at night too. Please don't put pressure on yourself for that ever to happen because it no, never I happens did. when we expect it. Yeah, and it can I, happen. I pray to him. I have sleep with his blanket, you know, and it can I have happen. his oxygen stickers on my hand. It's, and it can, yeah, happen during the day. It can happen. It's about finding life and loss, you know? It's like bring it, buying yourself flowers and realizing, you know, there's loss. We buy flowers for funerals, but we also buy flowers because they brighten our day. So it's like finding that meaning and things that, you know, we may, you know, just look at differently right now. But his heart is very much still with you. And I know when you have that passion and purpose in your life that um, you're going to create it. You know, we manifest uh, just by the intention alone and you're you are manifesting, even though with your physical eyes, you're like, you know, seeing something uh, else maybe at the moment, but don't, don't believe in what you're seeing at the moment. How's that? You know, your faith will carry you and take you far. And uh, that's what I'm feeling for you, Brooke. He was a lovely, a lovely young man and he would always want to give back. And he feels like he's such a helper on the other side, you know? And I want to say, I don't know if you feel tap, 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 or tap, 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 or I don't know where the tapping is, but he says he's tapping, tapping. I'm tapping you. I'm tapping you. 
the, I don't know, just this feeling. I don't know if you feel this way, but mm -hmm. if you ever get that sense of him around, he's, okay. he's a oh, very brilliant. He comes, attention. Yeah. He comes to you in balloons. I don't know why he's sh showing me like a, a lot of balloons, like a lot of balloons, <laughs> a lot of balloons. Uh, yeah. But, and that's what I'm just like trying to pay better attention, but sometimes yeah. I think I'm so clouded and just mm -hmm. devastation, you know, mm -hmm. and I just geared helping. I raised $1,400 for a memorial bench oh, and, and a plaque and, and within a month, we're going to have that dedicated in a park because he never could get up on his feet, you know, and just tried to try to be positive, you know, um, yeah. we're, we're just trying. And I went to a memorial for another heart baby that died last night. And, you know, cause that's the least I can do is show up for another family. Mm -hmm. um, so just try and try and be good for other people. And uh, so if I just may leave you with this, um, Brooke, before I move on, is that uh, when we are in grief, when we have a loss of a close relative, family member, your grandson, I feel personally, personal, my experience is that your energy field is much more open right now to the spirit world. And even though it may be hard or we feel we're not connected or we're in a cloud, sometimes that cloud can be the connection because of your energy field is so emotional right now so it's not that you're preventing anything from happening it's it, it's if anything you're in an altered i don't want to say altered state but you're kind of connecting with the love of your grandson being on the other side how's that okay. kind of makes sense that we're kind of we feel a little wobbly cheryl like i'm sleeping all different hours i'm emotional i'm grieving i'm you know i'm in this you know i don't know where i am and i don't know how to feel and I have all the emotions and I do feel there's a part of us that through the love of someone, we are connected to them and it will only get stronger, but the cloudiness that you're feeling, it's all good. You know, it's all good. It's just how it, how it's just the experience of the transition you're happening, going through and the transformation that's happening right now, because you're shifting, your energy is shifting. Um, so we always ask, we just hold light for ourselves. You know, Brooke, we just hold light for you. We send you a prayer and we know that you're going to be okay. We, and I know that, you know, through everybody listening to your, to you tonight and your grandson, um, that this will manifest, you know, this will happen. This will, this will create healing and be of benefit to many people. I hope so. Thank you I, for what I, you're doing. Yeah. I have to, I, I have, we have to just live right by him yeah yeah good guy good good young man thank you thank you thank you so much for being with us tonight and really sharing cash because i just feel that tender love coming through with him and dogs coming through of course i mean just he's just um you know um unconditional love you know that young person thank you i'm just counting there sorry you guys just looking up something. That poor grandmother. Okay. Brooke lives in Maryland. That's the only connection she has with Marilyn that she was talking about earlier. She's starting a foundation. Her grandson died six weeks before this. He was two years old. He had all sorts of heart problems. His name is Cash with a K. Um, five weeks ago, I'm sorry. And she wants to know about this foundation she started. Now, I am not going to talk about the best use of somebody's time who is a grandmother who's just gone through this horrid time with her grandson um i'm just only going to talk about this mediumship reading okay so while she was blabbering on about who knows what while the mother is grieving i mean the grandmother is grieving and 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 very upset but this woman's going on about light and spirit and old souls and all that other nonsense it's just like spewing out of her mouth i went and looked up this cash foundation okay so 
Cheryl is setting her expectations up pretty damn high. Now, is this a good thing to do to somebody? You have to work really, really hard to make this into something. And you just, you know, and when, when, when the grandmother, this, this uh, Brooke is dealing, she's still in the grieving, I mean, serious grieving process. And, uh, you know, of course, as we all know, grief go, continues, but usually people get through it to some point and find a new normal where they can function and have some sort of um, ability to, to push through it. Okay. Okay. I totally understand it does not go, but it does change. Grief does change and, and, and she needs to see somebody who can help her. Um, and it is not Cheryl Murphy. Okay. She tells her that this foundation is going to be so big. It's going to be as big as the Susan G. Komen foundation. That is a cancer foundation that is massive breast cancer. It is beyond massive. It's gigantic organization. So she's setting up expectations that, you know, you got to get celebrities to endorse it and you've got to get all these people to help you with it and you got to get on it and all these other things. Okay, I'm looking at the Cash, Courageous Cash Foundation, Memorial Beach, um, Cash with a K. It is a GoFundMe. Now, I'm not putting this down or anything. This is what um, this is what the grandmother, Brooke, is thinking about. She's trying to put a bench and a plaque in a city park, a little park where the kids can play and slides, and there's a picture of it. This grief vampire over here, Cheryl, is got her set up to get in. She wants her to go and get endorsements from celebrities and grow as big as the Susan G. Conan Foundation. Those are on different planets as far as foundations go and the amount of work that goes in them. On this GoFundMe that Brooke has set up, there's her name, and she has raised $1,585 out of a goal of $1,400. So she's achieved her goal. She's going to put a plaque and a bench in his memory at a, at a park in Maryland. And she's going to do that. I assume it's done. We see a picture of a bench. I don't know if it's the right bench. Um, and... She talks about her grandson. I mean, if this was hot reading, if this is Thomas John who got a hold of this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Would he have had so much? Oh my gosh. So it's got the day he was born, the day he died, what time of the day he died, where he died. There is so much information on here. I'm telling you, you put out a lot of private information about yourself and your family. Do not be surprised when you go to a medium and the medium is suddenly has all that information. Just be aware of it. I'm not saying don't put private information up. I have private information all about me and my family all over the place. But if somebody starts telling me something specific, do not immediately associate it with, oh, gee, it must be coming from my dead family members. No, it's they, they know how to use the Internet. So there's, there's mentions of her daughter and her daughter's name, the other brother. There's adorable pictures of this sweet little boy. Oh my gosh. He is just sweet. And then his brother's giving him a kiss. Oh, just heartbreaking. And the reason why I was counting is because I wanted to see if anybody had made a donation since the reading that we have just um, uh, seen. And nobody has. So when this reading was done, and as I said, the video goes out to people the next day within, you know, 24 hours, the video goes out to everybody who paid to be on this um, gallery reading. In that time, nobody has donated. 
I was wondering if maybe Cheryl might have donated or Thomas John. Nope. The last donation was 26 days ago. And this reading that, that happened, happened 23 days ago. So nobody's made a donation since Cheryl said that this is going to be mega big and, and so on. I mean, it shows me all the donations and it shows me how many people donated. She's got a 24 donations. And the last donation was 26 days ago by somebody named Vanessa Bailey, who donated $50. It's not closed. I mean, you could still donate. So it's not like, it's not like uh, Brooke took it down. It's still there. Everything else on here was just go with the angels. Something about angels. Did you talk to him about angels? He's two years old. He spent almost his entire life in the hospital. Uh, I don't know what your foundation's name is. Why didn't you know what her foundation's name was? You're the medium. I see blue. There's nothing blue here on this site. It's a picture of a park. Picture of the child picture of his brother, picture of a bench that is just a generic bench. It's not the one that they're donating. He's wearing dark blue or black. There's nothing blue. She says she's designing a logo. Should we look? Let's take a quick look. You guys, this is how it works. Oh man, I can't believe I'm doing this here. Let's look and see. Now that we know the exact wording of the name, GoFundMe is the first thing that comes up. That's it. Some images, same images that were on the uh, GoFundMe. Okay, it's been 23 days, right? I'm looking it up on Facebook. Let's see. Aha, here's a Facebook page. And it is um, has 94 likes, 316 followers, and the logo, no logo. Well, maybe this is the logo. No, that's not it. No logo, no blue. There is a um somebody else's levi's legacy somebody else is, has started a a ribbon it's a red ribbon and a blue ribbon it's like goes red and blue and that's something she's posted there's nothing i'm the mean one because i bring these things up i check the facts when somebody says um something i fact check it and then i'm the one that's blamed for being the person who you know, how dare I check the facts? This is a grieving grandmother. That's the kind of stuff I get. That's the kind of hate and vitriol I get. How dare you attack this medium who's only giving this poor grandmother some some love and attention and some hope, some hope. You're taking away her hope. Is that what I'm doing? I'm saying this woman is lying to her. I'm pointing out that she is making this up. She says something about writing a book or a book is being written or something about a book and all the proceeds go to her foundation. There's no foundation. Maybe there will be someday. I don't know. Tap, tap, tap. Tapping on you. Balloons. There's nothing about balloons here anywhere. Nothing balloons on the Facebook page. Let's see if I see anything over here on the posts. Any balloons? No. She put up a bunch of pumpkins. Um, some pictures of her just adorable little grandson. National World Heart Day, September 29th, 2023. Um, the last time she posted was just minutes ago, 41 minutes ago. She put up a picture, oh, 38 minutes ago. She says, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. 
nothing. I'm not blaming Brooke. This helps her work through her grief, respect and 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 remember her grandson. Just adorable. Lots of pictures of him. Wonderful. Excellent. This is probably probably good for her. I don't know. I'm not a grief counselor. I don't, I'm not licensed. Neither is Cheryl. But Brooke is sounded a lot like she was trying to blame herself that she needs to be on going and, and looking for signs. And oh my gosh, I'm trying to stay open to looking for all these signs from cash. Let's go back to that question I, I asked you guys earlier to be looking for. Those three questions. Number one, are these readings helpful to the sitters? Okay, we've gone through two. We hit the first woman. Gosh, I'm forgetting which one she was. That was Martha. Was it helpful? What is missing? So we can show that she really is in connection with the dead. Um, and is this entertainment? I'm not laughing. I'm not entertained. Feels like somebody's preying on this these people. It sounds like somebody's just preying on them. P-R-E-Y, not P-R-A-Y. Okay, just double checked. That's it for these two readings. So let's let's talk really quickly about that. And you guys can leave me your comments in the notes. Um, underneath the comments under the video, I would appreciate that. If you enjoy these kinds of things, these take hours to do for me. Editing the video, clipping the video. Um, I mean, just a, a 19 minute readings, two two readings in this 19 minutes is going to take forever. Um, was it helpful? Martha, the first one, was that helpful? She told her that you need new doctors. You're going to need new blood work. You should calm down. And a birthday just passed. That's not helpful even though it didn't, and her jokes, her sister's telling her jokes, we didn't hear any of the jokes, okay, so no help at all, for Brooke, was she helpful, telling her that she's in contact with her little grandson, and that she's going to have this giant foundation, she just has to, I don't know, go to this massive amounts of work, getting celebrity endorsements, and getting a book, and and on and on and on. Nope. Not 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 helpful. What is missing? Okay, with Martha. Well, pretty much everything. She didn't tell her much of anything. She didn't name her sisters. Well, she didn't name the sister. She said her she said, Who's Marilyn? And the sister said, and and Martha said, my sister, so it's going back to the same old tropes where they say, they throw out a name, and then the sitter says, oh, that's my grandson. And then the medium says, oh, yes, it is your grandson. That's what he's telling me. And then, and then the person, the sitter, remembers later, she'll come to her friends and family and everything. The story will grow and grow and grow and become more elaborate over time. As she repeats the story more and more times. And she says, I went to this medium. She was just amazing. She told me my grandson's name was, you know, whatever. And she told me all these amazing things. And she told me this and she told me that. Wouldn't probably, she didn't really tell you that. Okay. So I don't see anything of help for the first one. As far as missing pretty much everything. I mean, Cheryl didn't even know the name of the foundation. She didn't know the name of the child. She said his name was, what was it she called her? She told him it was Cash. And then she went back and said it was a different name. It sounded like Cash. What was it? You guys all remember. And then she had to come back and say it's Cash. And it's with a K. So, uh, you know, Cash was only two years old when he died. He doesn't know how to write. So I guess he can't tell Cheryl. 
which is odd that they're able to tell her so much information whenever they're, they're not nonverbal and well, whatever. When you, when you're playing with this mediumship stuff, it's just makeup pretend time. It's whatever goes, whatever, whatever you think, whatever you think you can get away with, that's what happens. There's no rules. And um, is this entertainment? As the media likes to portray, oh, it's all fun and games. Come on, man. Nobody really believes this. Mm -mm. Hey, y'all. I'm going to upload this video. I have one more reading from Cheryl. And then we will sum up all of Cheryl's readings that she's done in this hour that's taken me like five, ten hours to go through and make videos of. And let's just sum up who this person is. What is she like? What's Has she gotten any hits? Is there anything? Let's talk about it in the comments. I appreciate you being along on this journey. If you are here for the first time, you're welcome to be here. I love having people here. You're learning about mediumship. Please like please subscribe, please comment. I do my best to get to my comments. Thank you all. One more video to go.